Okay, so let's um, start the slideshow. Okay, Dabney, whenever you're ready. Okay. You have it up? I, I, oh, did I, am I not sharing my screen? Okay, let me, let me back up here, sorry. All righty. Good morning, everybody. Um, glad that you have joined us. Um, my name is Dabney Dwyer and I am with the Episcopal Diocese of Dallas. And I co-chair the Faith Community Action Team with Chelsea Horde, who is with the Dallas Baptist Association. So I wel welcome you all being here. Uh, there's a couple of housekeeping things that we need to just to mention to you that please remain on mute during the meeting. Um, and you can type any questions into chat. Um, during the session and we'll do our best to try to get back and um, answer you. Um, if you have some information that's helpful uh, that you can share in the chat, that would be great. Um, and then uh, uh, all the slides and handouts will be emailed to all of you after the meeting. So you'll get everything from, our, uh, from today and um, our uh, spotlight, spotlight speakers as well. So I'm just gonna give you a little brief overview of the history of the coalition. Um, basically, we were organized in 2012, uh, grassroots effort with multiple public and private entities. And all these folks were interested in, or had a stake in trying to reduce food insecurity in Dallas County. So over the years, uh, through hard work and planning, um, our current mission is to empower Dallas County residents to gain equitable access to healthy food. And the way that we are organized is that we have a leadership team, which you're currently looking at. Um, the, the team, this team currently uh, it represents 15 organizations um, that are work, we're all working together to um, mitigate hunger. They, uh, we meet every month. Um, obviously, it's been by Zoom lately, but um, that is when we uh, gather our information, everybody shares what's going on. And um, the way that we operate is that we each, there are five uh, action teams, and each action team develops their own goals and objectives. Um, and as you can see, I'll give you a minute to look at that. Uh, we, we are the faith community. And if you're on this call, then you are part of the faith community action team. Each action team is led by one of the members of the leadership team. So the faith community action team, um, our uh, goal is to equip congregations to implement one or more hunger solutions proven to reduce food insecurity, particularly among seniors and, and children. Um, and you will see that tool that we use in just a, just a few minutes. Um, the action team leadership circle is myself, as I mentioned, uh, Chelsea Horde and Pastor Julius Bamibe, who is uh, with Comforter Christian Church in Grand Prairie. I don't know if Pastor is on the call yet, but... Um, so that is pretty much it. Our tool that we use to um, assist churches and helping mobilize churches to, to work on hunger in their community is a tool called the Hunger Solutions for the Faith Community. And this is our fifth edition. And Wyamela um, is going to take a few minutes just to go over what is in the, uh, the guide. Um, and how to access information in the guide. Yes, thank you, Dabney. So we are quite proud that this is the fifth, fifth edition. The first one was published in 2014. So we've been uh, publishing it um, almost annually for uh, since then. And I'm gonna click on this link here. Let's see what it does. And, uh, the link there in the agenda uh, that I sent this morning, the link is also there in the agenda. This is our Faith Community Hunger Solutions Action Team page on our website. 
the Dallas uh, Coalition for Hunger Solutions has, has a website. You can find us at dallashunger.org. And on our page here, you can learn about um, what our purpose is and why we do what we do and who's involved, see some pictures of who's been involved with us over, over the years. And one of the, one of the ways that we help uh, uh, congregations um, reduce food insecurity among their neighbors um, is with this guide. And so if you click on this button here, uh, you can download a copy of this guide. There's no charge, you can print it if you want to print it. Uh, we have made hard copies available in the past when we were meeting in person, but uh, now it's, it's online. And at some point when we start uh, convening in person again, we'll have copies that are available at no charge. Um, this is a guide for congregations seeking to improve food security in Dallas County. But really in, any, any, any group of folks can, can take this book and look through it and find, um, find opportunities to, to collaborate uh, on this issue. Table of contents lists the organizations and programs uh, in this guide who are already working to address food insecurity and, uh, and need help. They need time, they need your time, they need resources, they need volunteers. There's an introduction with some contact information here. Okay, and so each page in the guide uh, lists an organization or a program. It gives an overview of that organization, uh, the organization's impact on hunger, and how uh, partners can, can help. And there's contact information, uh, community gardens, community distribution partnership with Crossroads Community Services, community distribution partnership with Sharing Life, pu public policy roundtables, Eating Well is a Snap. This is our Senior Hunger Outreach Project. Meals on Wheels, we're going to hear today from uh, Tracy Demery with Meals on Wheels, but there are, there are opportunities there to, to partner and collaborate. Out of school child meals, including after school meals and summer meals for children. Super schools, uh, adopting schools, and uh, helping schools um, uh, create food pantries within their, within their schools, on their campuses to, to provide some relief to families of students. Uh, senior community meals, these are the congregate meals that are available in, in communities uh, where seniors can come if you're 60 years old and older or if you're married to somebody 60 years old and older and have, have a hot meal and fellowship, sorry, uh, daily at no cost. And then there are more hunger solutions at the back here um, and some other resources to help congregations get started if they want to implement one or more of these solutions that are in this, that are in this guide. Why so, now? Yes, Excuse me, I hate to I hate to interrupt you. That's um, okay. Is everybody are you see, everybody seeing the content on the second page? Because you, I think you're still on just the uh, um, the front page heading. Oh, am I? Oh, well, my I goodness. can't. I can't. Yeah, it's on, it's yeah. on the front page. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me let me try this again. Let me stop. I'm sharing. sorry. I thought it was just me. But oh I, no, I'm, I wish no no. I would have said, I tried. Let me try it again. Let me try it again. Let me see. I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay, so now do you see something that says introduction? Hello? Yes, <laughs> yes. it's good now. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, you heard the spiel. I'll just uh, quickly go through some of these slides. This, there's a table of contents. There are like 10 or so organizations and programs listed here, uh, one on each page. And you can, there's an introduction that kind of gives you an overview of why we came up with this tool and, and how, how it is intended to be used. Congregations, as well as anyone who is concerned about hunger. Uh, can, can use the resources in this guide to try to, <clears throat> to get involved. Okay, so the American Heart Association is one of the organizations. There's an overview here 
of the American Heart Association and, and their uh, impact on hunger and how, uh, or how, how organizations and, and community members can get involved with, and there's contact information. Um, Community Garden Distribution Partnership, Crossroads Community Services on the West Side. It says my internet is unstable. Uh, the Community Distribution Partnership Sharing Life on the East Side of the County. Policy, public Policy Roundtables. Eating Well as a Snap, our Senior Hunger Outreach Project. Meals on Wheels out of school child meals, super schools, senior community meals, and then more hunger solutions at the, at the end and resources and some tools to help a congregation get started. So this guide, did you, did you see the um, page, the website page? Were you able to see that? <laughs> no? Okay, well, this guide is available at dallashunger.org. And if you go to the um, top of the um, homepage there uh, at dallashunger.org, then um, you can click on one of the action teams. You can click on the Faith Community Action Team and it will take you to the Faith Community page where you can find, find a copy of this guide. So with that, um, I'll just turn it over to Chelsea. Let me see. Chelsea. Right, well, yes, thank you so much, Wynella. I really appreciate that. Um, we hope that guide will be a useful tool to you and one that you can also share with others. So again, um, feel free to download it online. If you need hard copies, let us know. Um, give us your information. We'll see what we can do about that as well. Um, well, today we are going to be highlighting hunger solutions that focus on mobility. We've got two great organizations represented here today. Um, and speaking first, we are going to have Tracy Dimery. And Tracy is with um, VNA Meals on Wheels. And if you're not familiar with Meals on Wheels, um, they provide hot, nutritious, freshly prepared meals five days a week to Dallas County residents who cannot obtain or prepare meals for themselves due to either illness, advanced age, or disability. Um, and these meals help contribute to the overall health and well-being of participating seniors, including those with chronic illnesses and frail seniors who are homebound. Um, Tracy has actually held multiple positions with VNA Hospice Meals on Wheels Private Care, including management support analyst and routing coordinator, uh, currently, she is the community engagement coordinator, helping corporations connect with the communities that surround them. And so, Tracy, we're so glad to have you with us. Thank you for taking time out to be here. And I'm also going to go ahead and introduce our second speaker as well. And then Tracy will share, followed by our second speaker, and then we'll have a time of Q&A where uh, hopefully we can answer any questions that you may have. And with that, our second speaker is Jonathan Braddock, and he's the Community Development Manager at Phoenix Mobility Rising. Uh, that's a nonprofit ride service organization serving Dallas area residents. So Phoenix provides reliable and affordable transportation with which Americans can connect to the lifeline of their communities to live a healthy quality life. Uh, Phoenix is dedicated to supporting mobility for underserved populations through community-led transportation solutions. Um, in his current position, Jonathan oversees the AARP Ride 50 program, which is open to people of all ages, but focuses on persons 50 and older and other vulnerable individuals. Uh, Jonathan's previous experience includes six years as a program services coordinator with the North Texas Food Bank, uh, where he worked to develop community relationships with multiple nonprofit organizations in North Texas. So Jonathan, thank you as well for taking time out and being here to share with us today. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Tracy, followed by Jonathan. And again, if you have questions for either Tracy or Jonathan, you can just go ahead and type those into the chat and we'll hope to address as many of those as possible when it comes time for Q&A. So thank you so much, Tracy, go ahead. 
Thank you, Chelsea. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me. I'm so grateful to be here to speak about Meals on Wheels, VNA Meals on Wheels as a whole. Um, just to give a little bit of an overview or about myself, um, I know Chelsea did the bio. I have been with VNA Meals on Wheels for about six years now. Actually, today is my six year anniversary with Meals on Wheels. So that is a great thing. Um, I have held multiple positions at Meals on Wheels, starting with a routing coordinator. Um, I went to a Meals on Wheels conference and that was it for me. This is something that I love to do. It is something that I love to talk about. I love working for VNA because what they stand for and the impact that we have in the community. Um, now I am the engagement, the community engagement coordinator at VNA Meals on Wheels, and we do connect corporations and community partners um, to get them out into to the community to actually assist with making that impact that we do every day. Um, so again, thank you for all having me. Thank you guys for being out to learn a little bit more about Meals on Wheels and um, helping with senior hunger. Um, Meals on Wheels or VNA was actually established um, 88 years ago by uh, Sadie Lefkowitz, who is who was a rabbi's wife. She had a few uh, Dallas County nurse friends that partnered with her to go around the um, lower cities or the tent cities in Dallas County, which like East Dallas, West Dallas, to provide um, health care, much needed health care for women and children whose husbands were off during the Great Depression. Um, during that time, they visited a lot of different counties within or a lot of different areas within Dallas County to provide this service. Um, in 1954, BNA actually adopted Meals on Wheels um, from the Dallas County Women's Council. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so I can get my slide show up. Give me just a second. All right. So we adopted um, Meals on Wheels in 1954, like I stated, um, from the Dallas Women's Council. Um, and because it was in line with the vision and the mission of VNA, which is to help people age with dignity and independence in their home, we took it on. Um, at the time, well, let me backtrack just a little bit. VNA also um, provides programs or services such as hospice care and care choice, which is the first Medicare sponsored home-based palliative care program in North Texas. And then of course we have the Meals on Wheels program. Um, in 1934 is when we were established. 1954, we adopted Meals on Wheels. At about 1973, when we adopted um, Meals on Wheels, the Dallas Women Council was serving maybe about 125 um, or a little less people in Dallas County communities. They started out with just um, holiday meals, such as Christmas meals or Thanksgiving meals. Um, and the people would come to them and receive their meals um, for that day. Um, and then as we adopted, when we adopted it, it grew. And now today we serve over 4,600 clients in the Dallas County area. We serve areas anywhere from White Rock, Rockwall, Rowlett, to um, Oak Cliff, Duncanville, Lancaster, and DeSoto. So we're all across Dallas County. Um, our mission, again, is to make sure that our seniors age with dignity in their homes. Now, one meal for a senior can cost about $7. So we're investing in senior nutrition. Um, one day in a nursing home is about $150 for that senior or their family. Um, and one night in the hospital could be about anywhere from $2,000 to $250. To $2,520, um, which either the family or their insurance, the senior would have to pay. 
with us being able to help these seniors stay at home and provide this nutritionist meal, it actually saves them the cost of having to come out of their pockets or their insurance having to pay these costs for them. Um, let's see. Meals on Wheels, um, again, it reduces um, the seniors from having to leave their homes. Um, we realize that within the next 10 years, there will be more seniors documented on this earth than ever before. Um, right now, there are one in every four seniors live alone and feel lonely. Um, so we actually, Meals on Wheels program reduces malnutrition by providing nutritionally balanced lunches um, five days a week. Um, we provide human connection with COVID going on right now. There's been an increase in isolation. So we provide socialization, mm -hmm. safety checks and advocacy. Um, our volunteers become our eyes and ears um, when going out to see our clients to make sure that they're okay. And we reduce hospitalization and help seniors stay in their homes. Um, we did have a few challenges when COVID-19 first started. Um, in 2020, when everything first hit, March, VNA, Meals on Wheels, or VNA as a whole, decided to scale back on our meal delivery. So we went from a five-day-a-week meal delivery to down to a two-day-a-week meal delivery. At that time, we did take into consideration our volunteers as well as our clients. Uh, we wanted to make sure we kept everybody safe. So when we scaled back to two days, it was an all staff, all hands on deck operation. So everybody within VNA Meals on Wheels then started delivering meals. We do have about 75 or 73, I'm sorry, paid drivers um, that actually assist us in delivering these meals as well. Some of the challenges that we faced, of course, were safety precautions. Um, the cost of the meals increased. More seniors we found needed to be on service um, because of them not being able to now get out of their homes or have the transportation to get to um, grocery stores or having being in areas with food insecurities. Um, and then we did suffer again, the loss of, we had fewer volunteers. Initially, um, limited volunteers and in-person deliveries, volunteers actually returned back to um, delivering meals. We went to a three day a week meal delivery um, in July. So we allowed most of our volunteers to come back. And because we were at a three day meal delivery, um, which was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, our Mondays and Fridays became a virtual volunteer opportunity. These virtual volunteer opportunities um, were volunteers that were calling our clients that we could not see every day that we were used to seeing every day just to check on them and see if they um, had any other additional needs that we can assist them with. Um, we had plenty of resources and plenty of um, partners that we can connect them with um, to get them rides or additional resources that they need, help with utilities and things like that. Um, we then also start providing our volunteers as well as our clients with uh, personal protective equipment, um, disposable masks. We had an organization that hand sewed um, 46 to 4,700 washable masks and donated them to us. So we were able to pass them out to our clients and volunteers as well. Um, hand sanitizers, um, things of that nature. We wanted to make sure that our volunteers that were coming back were safe um, and protected so our clients could still be safe and protected. Um, the senior population is very vulnerable, um, which is why, you know, they're most of our seniors or the majority of our seniors are homebound seniors. They're unable to leave their home. So we want to make sure that they are safe at all times. Um, again, we did have our virtual deliveries, which were on Mondays and Fridays. We also used our virtual, our virtual deliveries to reach out to our clients to see once the vaccine was available, who was interested in receiving the vaccine um, and who was not. 
Um, with that information, we did collaborate with Dallas Fire Rescue to get the vaccine out. Dallas Fire Rescue would actually go out to our seniors' homes, administer the vaccine, um, the first and the second dose. We um, partnered with Baylor Scott and White um, and a couple of other organizations in different areas um, to administer the vaccine as well. They would also go to the client's homes to administer these vaccines. We wanted to make sure that everyone remained safe. Um, meeting non-food needs for clients, we were able to provide our clients through donations from our volunteers or our, partnered, our partners, um, essential toiletry items um, that we have, so shampoo, toothpaste, toothpaste, toothbrushes, um, soap, washcloths, things of that nature. We were able to get them out to our seniors if they needed them. So just a little bit about the functionality of Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels is one of the largest um, home base or one of the largest meal delivery programs in the United States. We have the largest in-house kitchen. Um, our kitchen starts preparing our meals at about four o'clock in the morning um, to get the meals ready to go out on trucks to be delivered to over 20 different meal pickup locations to go out to the 4,600 clients that we serve every day. So the video that I'm going to show now is basically the journey of a meal. It's the from the start of the kitchen preparing to when the volunteers pick up at the depots and to get those meals out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the video. Please bear with me because I think I have to share my screen again when it starts. Thank you for considering how you can make the most of your lunch break by becoming a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I'm sorry. Okay. You can deliver hope to our homebound senior neighbors. Welcome to the VNA Meals on Wheels State of the Art Commercial Kitchen, where at 5 a.m. every Monday through Friday, our staff springs to life, creating freshly prepared, nutritious meals for the thousands of seniors we serve. As the largest single site provider of Meals on Wheels in the country, the work done at the VNA Haggerty Kitchen is described as a daily miracle. All meals prepared meet the state of Texas dietary guidelines for senior nutrition. With an entree on two sides as well as a bag of refrigerated items that typically include a milk or a juice, bread, and a dessert. With a six-week rotation of menu options, VNA surveys clients about the meals and adjusts the menu based on the client's feedback. At 8 a.m., the tray line promptly begins with 140 trays completed every five minutes. The meals are separated into the coolers for individual routes and loaded onto our VNA trucks for delivery to one of 22 drop sites throughout the county. VNA Meals on Wheels serves the entire 1,000 square miles of down. Sorry, I just gotta, my internet is unstable as well. Let's try again. Alice County including 27 municipalities. The tray line is finished by 9.30 a.m. and the staff begins preparation for the next day. Between 10 and 10.45 a.m., volunteers and paid drivers arrive at their meal drop site to pick up their meal. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna spin. 
Well, that's not good. There it goes. The average route takes approximately one hour to complete, delivering food and friendship to our homebound seniors in need. Now, you'll see three clients talk about what VNA Meals on Wheels means to them. I'm so sorry, guys. on wheels is so much more than a meal in addition to providing a hot nutritious lunch we ease feelings of isolation and loneliness and help keep seniors at home where they want to be sign up to become a volunteer today So with helping us deliver, we have corporate days of caring, which are, or community um, days of caring, which are when our community-based partners or our corporate partners come out for one large day of caring. I don't know, some of you may have heard about City Delivers Dallas. This was pre-COVID. Um, they haven't done it since COVID, um, but Bank of America has come out and done a large day of caring to where they deliver the majority of our meals for that day. Um, we just did another, we observed Martin Luther King Day as a, a day of caring where a lot of our volunteers come out and serve meals on Martin Luther King Day to um, our clients. Um, just Monday, which we did a Martin Luther King Day Day of Caring. We did 125 routes volunteers delivered. That was over 1,800 meals that were delivered by volunteers that was able to save VNA money from having to pay our pay drivers to deliver these meals. So it was such a great impact. Um, we did have virtual deliveries. Things have changed a little bit. So we're actually not doing virtual deliveries now because we are back to a five day a week meal delivery. Um, our days that we truly need volunteers most are on Mondays and Fridays because of this. Again, our Mondays and Fridays were reserved for our virtual deliveries when we move back to a five day a week um, meal delivery in October everything kind of switched and changed. So it is, it's a little difficult getting our volunteers back into the swing of things on Mondays and Fridays because they were used to doing virtual deliveries. Um, and we understand that COVID is an issue and everyone wants to be safe and we want everyone to be safe. But in that, our seniors still need their meals. So we have put different policies and procedures in place to um, make sure that we are in compliance with CDC and um, people are able to deliver meals to our clients um, safely. Um, we do ask our volunteers to hand sanitize before getting out the car to deliver the meal, after delivering the meal. Um, a lot of our clients now have it to where they will ask the volunteer, do you mind just placing it right outside the door? I'll get it. Or, you know, have they'll have someone there at the home with them to where they can just receive their meals. Our volunteers and our clients both wear masks during meal deliveries. Um, so we have taken a lot of different steps to ensure that our volunteers as well as our clients remain safe. 
Thank God that we have not had any volunteers report that they have received COVID um, while delivering, which is a great thing because we've been in this COVID pandemic thing for two years now. It doesn't even seem like, it seems like it just started yesterday, but it's been two years. So, so glad that we haven't had any of that. So we have been very fortunate to where volunteers are still willing to say, hey, let me give it a try. Let me get out here into the community. And when they see that, you know, the humbling experience and the fact that they're helping other people that are unable to leave their homes, people who are unable to prepare meals for themselves or do not have the income because they are living below the poverty level, um, they see the joy in their face because we deliver more than just a meal. We're delivering compassion and friendship and kinship and um, we're able to assist our volunteers, again, become our eyes and ears. So we let them know if you see anything out of the ordinary um, that you want to report back to Meals on Wheel, most definitely do that. We now have a mobile app to where they don't have to have a paper manifest. It's on your phone. You download the mobile app, you get your client list. Um, the mobile app connects to Google Maps to give you directions to the client's home. It connects to your phone. That way, if you have to call the client to make sure that they're at home, it does that. Um, so we have incorporated a lot of different resources and a lot of different tools to make delivering that much more simpler and to be able to engage more volunteers. My hopes are to get more community-based or faith-based organizations involved in this. Um, because I feel like we all share the same type of mission. And that is to make sure that our seniors, our elders, um, children alike are all taken care of where they can't be, they can't do it themselves. So, you know, that is what I am hoping for. I am at the end of my slide. I probably have a little bit of time left. I know I can get a little windy sometimes. So I try to cut myself back from talking so much about VNA and the great work that we do. But I thank you guys again for allowing me to speak on this issue and share with you our story and our journey. Um, and hopefully we have some people who reach out to want to become volunteers. So thank you again. Thank you, Tracy. And Tracy, if you wouldn't mind putting your contact information in the chat um, so folks can have that. Uh, again, if you have questions for Tracy, go ahead and put those in the chat and we'll get to those during the Q&A time. And at this time, we're going to turn it over to Jonathan. All right. Thank you so much, Chelsea. And uh, thank you to the, uh, this, uh, the face based uh, community com committee. Uh, for your invite today. I uh, wanted to start off by just um, adding a little bit more to uh, my own uh, journey. And uh, I lived in, uh, in Dallas, born here um, and grew up in Plano and did work for the food, North Texas Food Bank for, for five, five, four or five years, six years. And I'll play uh, some folks on there that uh, on the on the, uh, the call here, um, uh, I worked with and had the opportunity to uh, to spend a lot of time in, in helping um, with food insecurity, uh, obviously with uh, within the uh, 13 county district uh, service area of North Texas Food Bank. And now I work for Phoenix Mobility Rising, which is a much uh, a younger organization. It's a national organization started in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska back in 2018. And um, as was mentioned, we focus on uh, providing transportation to the most vulnerable um, uh, populations in our country. Uh, we have uh, we're, we have programs roughly in seven states. Uh, Texas uh, being um, one of the larger ones. That we have uh, another program in Corpus, in Dallas. Um, but the program I want to talk about first here is the AARP Ride It Plus program, and that program is in two uh, three markets right now in Dallas. Columbia, uh, South Carolina, and Washtenaw County, um, Michigan, which is the Ann Arbor area. So just to, to start off with what the program is and what its purpose is, uh, it's simply this. It's dedicated to enhancing access to transportation options for older adults in Dallas County. Uh, that, that is our, um, our focus, our purpose. 
uh, where we started on. We launched this program back in December of 2020 after a seven month delay because of the pandemic. So we just had our first year anniversary of, um, of accepting and booking rides um, for, for individuals, uh, take, taking, uh, taking trips throughout the county and, um, and, um, and, uh, and, and beyond. So as far as what the program is, uh, I'll, I'll slightly um, make a correction on, on it's, it's not simply a ride share program. We have um, access to ride share and other ride sourcing uh, types of transportation options all in one place. So you've got transit uh, scheduling currently, uh, your ride share companies, Uber and Lyft, we have a volunteer program, a volunteer driver program, which I'll, um, I'll talk about here after this. And then we have specialty uh, services, which are simply um, small businesses, private companies that do ambulatory and or wheelchair service uh, um, services. And then finally, uh, we have a taxi cab service. So uh, what this means is uh, it's, it's mo mobility as a service, uh, accessible to anyone of all ages, um, targeting uh, older adults, uh, 50 plus uh, living in Dallas County. Uh, so the target is all of my outreach and marketing um, efforts go towards, towards the, that demographic. But like I mentioned, it is open to anyone of all age. And it's also, uh, there's no requirement to have a membership of AARP. We also provide multiple access points for booking a ride. So if you'll just remember, you can call, click, or tap to book a ride for yourself or on behalf of somebody else. So you call, we have a call center where you'll speak to someone, um, a live um, call agent. We have, uh, of course, a website where you can book a ride yourself or for someone else. Or if you have a smartphone, Android, iPhone, it doesn't matter, you can pull up um, our, our mobile app, um, it's called the Phoenix app. That's with an F, F-E-O-N-I-X. And you can download that app and you can see all the options um, in, in, on your phone. <clears throat> so the other thing that we focus on, and I, I want to mention that, that this program is, is open to anyone booking a ride, whether it's for themselves, they're doing the booking, or uh, there's an, there are organizations like a community partner uh, that uh, does the booking for, um, uh, on behalf of their clients or neighbors. So we provide this, uh, this uh, free charge. There's no charge to use the service for an organization. Um, uh, the, uh, the only cost is the ride, uh, the cost of the trip. Uh, and all of that uh, is provide all of the fees, the booking fees and the mileage per, per mileage fees are provided um, in, in one place to see all, all together. Um, I'll give a, a short little demo here briefly on that. But for organizations, uh, we work with um, uh, several, roughly around, around 11 right now, uh, that book rides on behalf uh, um, of their, their clients or program participants. So Dallas County Older Adult Services, who of course uh, does meal delivery. Uh, Brother Bill's Helping Hands, who's a, a partner agency of the North Texas Food Bank. Um, uh, Empowering the Masses, another uh, food pantry, uh, as well as... Uh, 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 sorry, Prison um, Health North Texas uh, and several others uh, that that utilize that need the ability to book and track uh, any type of transportation assistance that they're providing um, to to clients. So we have the ability to do that. We can, you can track your uh, your uh, your your trips um, and then um, use our reporting tools. And then finally, um, all, all, all that you do is simply pay your invoice at the end of the month on a net 30 uh, invoicing uh, timeframe. Now, we also have uh, free training available. So anytime we bring a, a community partner on board and they have case managers or, or the administrators who, who actually do the booking, uh, we, we train you. Uh, we also train passengers who want to learn about the program uh, through a virtual training uh, currently. Uh, we'll also train all of our transportation providers to learn how to accept trips that were booked um, um, on their uh, using their services. Uh, so we go through all that. We manage that um, the, the the program being uh, powered by Phoenix Mobility Rising and our operations staff and myself. And then finally, we also coordinate a I coordinate a quarterly mobility leadership circle meeting and a, an advisory council on a monthly basis. 
So that's actually this month, next uh, Thursday, uh, January 27th at 10 a.m. Um, I'll make sure the link gets out. To, if anybody wants to attend that meeting, uh, we, uh, we have our first uh, meeting of, uh, of the year. Uh, and uh, you'll hear a lot more detail about uh, the first year, uh, what successes we had, the impact, that type of thing as well. So our service area, as I mentioned, is uh, currently Dallas County. Uh, you know, when I started this uh, job, uh, these, these things had already been decided. Uh, if I had the opportunity, I would have said, don't just start with Dallas County, start with all four of the most, you know, populated uh, counties in North Texas. Um, my hope is that we'll, we'll do that this year. Uh, we'll get the permission to expand to Tarrant, uh, to, uh, uh, to Denton, uh, Collin, and possibly even beyond. Um, uh, basically, based on my recommendation that I see, there's a lot of demand. There's a lot, lot of need for this type of program all over North Texas. Uh, so to define what the service area really means, there's no geo co geo uh, coding or anything like that. Um, it's simply if we have a provider that covers a certain area, then you'll see that provider in the search based on your pickup and drop off location. OK, so what I tell people is you can get into Dallas County, you can get out of Dallas County or you can travel within Dallas County. And that's simply uh, what that service area means. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, who can use uh, the program? I, I, um, I said this before, of course, but uh, uh, the focus really is on older adults and underserved popula uh, populations. Uh, we know that transportation is one of the most expensive things. Um, and when you, when you are on a fixed budget like older adults are, uh, you need affordable option. You need good uh, service, customer service, and the ability to trust uh, the uh, individual driving you uh, to your appointments, especially now getting back to uh, medical appointments, we saw um, overwhelmingly uh, above 75% of all of our trips, uh, trip purposes were for medical appointments. And um, so it is, uh, it is uh, you, you need food to, to, to nurture your body to get back to health. Of course, you need to get access to your doctor, to your dentist, whoever, um, wherever you're going in order to help you get there. Um, so food insecurity and, uh, and, and access to medical care go hand in hand, and transportation is, of course, um, a link. So what are, what are the benefits uh, of, of the uh, program? Well, um, first off, with, for individuals, uh, like I mentioned, access to health care is part of primary benefit. Access to employment, uh, access to education. Simply this, if you are looking to go somewhere in, in, uh, within Dallas County or out of the Dallas Tech County area, uh, you can book a ride um, for whatever reason. Uh, it's not just for medical. It's not just for getting access to food. You can go to church. You can socialize. You can go shopping. Um, <clears throat> initially, uh, some of you might, uh, that, that might have heard the program earlier on when we were just launching there was a, a, a ride uh, trip purpose restriction uh, put in place because of COVID. At that time, it was just medical access to food, pharmacy, I believe. Uh, that, of course, uh, that was that restriction was lifted uh, last year in July, and we're able to provide a ride to anywhere the individual uh, wants to go, or or the community organization wants to book a ride on behalf of someone. So like I mentioned, organizations uh, like those uh, uh, previously mentioned um, have the benefit of managing their, 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 their financial part of, of that. If they're going to allocate donations or resources within the organization to pay for rides, you can um, use our tool to, uh, to be able to do that. Um, you know, uh, reporting for um, uh, trips by, um, by passenger is, is essentially, a, um, you know, being able to see who's uh, who's been uh, going where and how often that way you can budget that um, for your next um, or look at it uh, as a way to um, justify a grant. Uh, also, uh, you're, you're more efficient. You're not just calling the cab company. You're not just using a personal Uber or, or Lyft account, which can be very uh, tricky sometimes um, using those technologies. If you do it all in one place, you not only have access to the ride share, but you have access to all those other types of transportation options. So it's a lot more efficient when it comes to an organization doing this on behalf of, of uh, clients. 
Uh, and and we we just uh, wrapped up our first uh, uh, year, and we we had our our post uh, year surveys um, from all of our providers, passengers. Um, uh, actually, not just we had focus groups, um, so that information is is internal right now. But I can tell you that the impact was great. Uh, we had a lot of great uh, 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 feedback. Uh, as well as uh, compliments and, and a, a high high level of satisfaction from the uh, passengers and all that were involved. So I want to point this out um, as a, as a another uh, reason why transportation is so important. Uh, as a transportation as an SDOH factor or social determinant of health, uh, you you need access to all of these things in this circle. And a lot of times, if you don't have that one link, that missing thing, you don't have a car, you don't have access to a car, you don't always have a reliable ride. Uh, maybe you have challenges um, using uh, certain types of transportation. This is a, um, a great solution uh, to be able to get to all of those factors to social services, behavioral health, and so on. Uh, transportation is a surviving service uh, and that will help you thrive. So just to paint a picture here or provide an example, uh, this is Dolores and, and she has type one diabetes, osteoporosis, glaucoma, um, and has limited mobility. She lives alone. Uh, she is unable to drive and has no access to transportation. Uh, so she's been rationing insulin resulting in erratic blood sugar. So the solution was uh, um, that she lives uh, within the service area of Brother Bills. This is an example uh, uh, so for everybody, uh, but Brother Bills being an actual community partner, uh, one of their staff members uh, books rides now on behalf of Dolores using the AARP Ride at 50 Plus program to regular medical visits and ancillary care, including lab work and trips to the pharmacy. Uh, now she self-reports that she has since controlled blood sugar and improved mobility and improved overall health. Uh, so just another kind of case for transportation, uh, the, the National Academy of Sciences Transportation Research Board study indicating, indicated that providing transportation to preventative and routine medical appointments was estimated to save over $927 uh, per patient with diabetes, $333 per patient with asthma, and $2,743 per patient with heart disease. So if you can't get to an appointment, uh, you're obviously, you know, you're, the, the, the doctors or obviously the hospitals are, are wasting resources. Uh, why not provide that trip for someone who has trouble getting to their appointments? All right, so at this point, I just wanna go through some slides here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is going to look like if you were Brother Bill's uh, staff member or a volunteer at a church or wherever you had access to a community account to book a ride on behalf of, of somebody else. Maybe you, um, uh, you, you wanna, uh, uh, excuse me, maybe you want to book on behalf of, of church goers or um, your, your congregants, uh, or you want to, um, uh, provide this uh, as an additional transportation or additional social service uh, within your organization. <clears throat> so of course you have a login screen. Different, um, you can set up different users. So you have so certain people have um, have that ability. Um, once you have the member in um, your account, and there's a there's a, a menu for that, and I won't go into detail there. Uh, that they're listed here, and you simply just select them from the list here at the top. You enter their pickup address, their drop-off address, whether they want to depart at or arrive by a certain time, and then the date. And then if let's say this person, this is this is where this is a, a very useful tool to, to uh, narrow down the results of what options um, that an individual passenger may need. So Let's say if you have a, a wheelchair, someone who's in a wheelchair, permanently in a wheelchair, you can come in here and you can select wheelchair from the specialized services and only the wheelchair services will show because you don't want to book uh, a certain provider uh, that is not going to send a vehicle and a professional driver out that knows how to securely uh, um, transport someone in a wheelchair. And so you have these different advanced options as well. You can you can say, okay, well the um, the individual has a cane. Uh, there's um, they, they they will need uh, 
and they have a travel companion or service animal, that type of thing. So once you've done that, or you can simply leave all that blank and see all the options, you hit search, and then you have the ability to see everything in the, in the list. You see the pickup, the drop-off, what service type uh, it is, whether it's public or private, and most of these are private, uh, with the exception to DARP. Uh, then you have the, the name of the service, and the, or it's usually the, the, the business or organization name and then the type of service, and then the fare. Uh, so then you have the ability up here to do a one-way or round trip. Uh, that way you give the uh, um, ability for someone to get that trip back home or wherever they're going again. You can also book multiple um, trips, uh, you know, in, in a sense that uh, if you, you have uh, one, one leg is to the doctor and the next leg is to the grocery store and the next leg is to the, the pharmacy, you can you know, spread those out and the gaps in between so they have that ability to do that all in one day. Um, of course, you've got your, your pickup and then your drop-off address, um, all, all everything you just put in there at the top. Uh, then what you do is you select the type of service. So uh, if it's Cowboy Cab, um, you, you can click here for more details to learn more about the, the business if you don't know um, uh, the, the, the transportation organization. Right now, uh, we, we have, um, for those that you might be aware of some of these companies, uh, uh, Southern Dallas Link, Safe and Secure Transportation, Montana's Medical Transportation, TNR Transportation, <laughs> Cowboy Cab, uh, of course, Uber and Lyft, um, Becca and Call, and uh, Caring at Home. I think I got them all. <laughs> these are older slides, so um, I, I just wanted to mention that. So now you can see here from this list too that um, we have our Phoenix uh, volunteer driver program. And the one, one thing I'll mention here, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it here in a second, is that the volunteer drivers are, uh, the program is, a, is, is a, what we call our, tra their transportation providers, right? So all of these are our transportation providers. So they're listed uh, in there as well. The program is, and an individual or organization can book a volunteer um, based on um, uh, the, um, the availability. Uh, so you book it and then uh, within two days or more uh, notification. And then if we can't find a, a volunteer, we contact that, that person who booked it and we let them know, hey, that there's not one available right now. Uh, do you want to you, you want to choose a different service? Um, and then you just can pay the difference. Uh, for uh, just to 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 dissect the fare a little bit more, for a volunteer um, for the volunteer program, we charge a dollar seventy five. That's simply the transaction fee that we have to pay the software company, and then fifty eight cents a mile. A volunteer is is uh, reimbursed fourteen cents of that fifty eight cents if they choose. If they don't that they don't need it, they, they want to donate it back. They can donate it back to Phoenix or one of our community partners to go and help them pay for rides for their clients or their neighbors. So that's how that works with the volunteer. And I'll get to more of that um, here in a little bit. But uh, all, of the, all of the companies in here tell us what their booking fees are for their services. And they tell us what their, their, their per mileage fee is. Um, that is all set by the providers, not by us, not by the program. Uh, we just uh, we also have leverage, of course, a little bit. If you're going to be on the program, we want, you know, want a discount. If you can get, give us a discount. It's up to the provider to decide that. It's not up to us. But my role is to bring on the best providers. All of these providers, especially the, the small businesses, are all in the My Ride Guide um, from the uh, Greater uh, uh, Dallas Community um, Council. I think I might have said that wrong, but uh, if for you, those of you who are aware, uh, they put out, uh, you have My Ride Dallas or My Ride North Texas. Um, I use them as a refer, uh, reference or referral for any provider that comes on this program. All right, so to, to finish up and book the trip, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to cho choose that trip purpose. You'll have a pickup or a, a drop-off entrance description. So, you know, if you've got someone in a senior residences and you've got a gate or you've got a code or you've got a building number, it's great information to put in there. So the driver, the transportation uh, provider, dispatch can provide the information to the um, end driver. You can also put additional notes here. 
uh, uh, describing maybe um, something about the the um, the passenger uh, that that of course still it, it uh, uh, isn't uh, doesn't um, go against HIPAA uh, guidelines, but let's say uh, um, you know the in individual has a cane, or the individual is hard of hearing, or individuals is, is deaf. I know that's personal information, but it's also um, when when you you sign up um, uh, for the program, you take the 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 the, uh, the trip. It's information that we do need. To, to 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 know that way the driver can do their their best and provide the best service. Um, you can also do re reoccurring trips in here as well. So if you know you have an appointment uh, every other week or so forth, uh, then you can do that. And then currently we do have a COVID um, waiver that everybody has to call this number here and listen to a recording and and say yes or no to um, uh, because of um, uh, of course the the pandemic. Um, once that's done, then you hit um, uh, book trip. And then for, uh, again, this is for only community accounts, okay? We don't do invoicing for regular passengers who pay for their own trip. Uh, at this point, um, I, the community account um, user would just simply book and pay, and pay later. And then we send you an invoice. Um, and then that, that's, a, again, a net 30 um, a billing. So a church can, can fund rides. Uh, any organization simply can, can fund rides um, uh, in order uh, for, their, um, for themselves, for their community members, or neighbors, whoever. Um, if this was a passenger, it would just go to a credit card um, um, or payment screen where you just put, it, put in a credit card or a debit card. There is no cash transaction at all um, on this program. If you want to tip the driver, you can, it has to be in cash, but you can't put a tip. Um, 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 you can't include a tip in the, in the trip. All right, so I'm gonna just briefly go through some stats here. This was actually information from March, 2020 and not from Dallas. This is from the, the original pilot location, which is Columbia, South Carolina. Um, we just got back this information as a, actually of last week. And it's, it's again, not, uh, I cannot share it yet. Um, so I, I encourage you to go to our, our uh, mobility leadership circle uh, meeting next Thursday at 10 a.m. And you'll hear a little bit more information about what they're able to share with you right now with our last year impact here in Dallas. But this gives you at least an understanding about, um, you know, this program, um, you know, market all through all markets and, and its impact so far. Some good quotes here, you know, basically the freedom to be able to go where I need to go. You know, it's affordable because there are affordable options, uh, lets you be more mobile to go to more places, uh, again, that you want to go. Um, I don't have to rely on my kids to take me around. Uh, so, so definitely some good testimonials that, that they received from this program, which launched in Columbia in 2018. Um, so it's been, it's been going now for, um, you know, a total of uh, uh, four years. And then we, they got a recommendation, 81%. Uh, again, so that it's nothing, you know, to uh, um, uh, yet I can share about Dallas results, which I will again next week. At this point, it might be, well, you want to wait till the end for uh, all questions. So I'll go ahead and jump over to um, the volunteer driver program now. And uh, give me one second here. Oh, and I want to say if there's anybody who uh, represents an organization and that wants to uh, add this as a, um, you know, a service that, that you want to provide your congregants or whomever, I can, we can do, we can do all that. There's a project kickoff. Um, and also a tra user training that, that we can put you through. Again, all of it is, is free of charge. All right, let me jump over to my next presentation here. All right. Okay. So as I mentioned, Phoenix Mobility Rising is and has been recruiting even through the pandemic. Uh, we've recruited so far Eight, uh, six, 16 volunteers since we launched last year. Uh, one of them is including myself, so I can I could take that as a as a uh, as an extra number. Um, doing all virtual <laughs> connections, as I'm sure a lot of you are also aware of, and, and being able to do that. Sometimes we were able to get out last year, uh, but um, yeah, uh, it's it's been tough. But we, but we've have I will say this: Dallas is a special place. 
okay? Now, all of you know this. It has the, probably the most caring people uh, I, I think I've ever experienced and encountered because of what they're willing to do, um, even during a stressful time. Um, we didn't, we haven't seen the reaction and engagement in other markets um, that we have had seen here. So uh, I want to lift up, um, and not just Dallas, of course, the entire North Texas area, because a lot of our all volunteers actually don't even live in the county. Um, they'll live outside of county or, you know, a little bit further away and they'll drive. I think we're all um, probably pretty comfortable driving too. All right. Okay. Uh, so a little bit more about, about Phoenix here. Again, uh, we're a registered 501c3 nonprofit launched in 20, uh, 2018. Um, I think we've talked about them. Th this is an old map, uh, but this does tell you some of the, um, This I think we're at four states here. We're at, I think, three more now. Um, but some of the communities that we're already in, um, all of these communities have a volunteer driver program. Uh, so uh, that, that's, that's what tells you that. And then I think now we're also in Mississippi. There's a volunteer driver program there. Uh, we are, let's see, what else? Um, I might be forgetting one or, or two others. Um, all right, so just to kind of give you a general definition of what we think a volunteer driver is. Uh, of course, first off and for, foremost, a helping hand, a kind heart, someone who will help, help open the door, even offer um, offer a, a hand into the vehicle, um, a facilitator um, of care, maybe helping to put, link them with other resources that the passenger may need, um, and sometimes even in some um, some instances a, a life changer uh, for someone um, in a in a rough spot. So these are responses from volunteers that we get, and, and what what drives them to um, to volunteer. Uh, certainly to make a difference in their communities uh, is the first and for foremost thing. And then supporting local organizations. Um, we, we can all um, get behind that. So a volunteer driver uh, will take any type of trip. Um, again, the AARP Ride 50 Press program, you can book any type of trip you need. And so you can take uh, um, uh, maybe someone to medical, like one of them, the, the, the the most repeated destinations is Parkland Hospital. Uh, so every, every volunteer gets probably two or three of those trips, you know, in the course of uh, the time that they spend um, volunteer, uh, volunteering for us. Uh, they, um, uh, they might take someone to the grocery store. Um, it is up to the volunteer whether they want to go beyond the vehicle. Uh, we don't um, tell them they can't do it. Uh, if they want to wait, if they want to walk into the um, to the doctor's doctor department office and help help that individual all the way in, they can. It's up to them. Uh, we don't require them to wait, but uh, you know certainly there are those that can um, and do if they have the time. Um, if there is a short turnaround in the first leg and the return leg, oftentimes our volunteers will just wait uh, for the passenger to um, to exit the building and come back out. Uh, one thing I do want to mention here uh, it says food food pantry deliveries. We are in the process here of working uh, with uh, empowering the masses to do uh, food pantry deliveries, uh, home deliveries uh, of, um, of, of non-perishable and perishable goods from a food pantry to a, um, a client's uh, uh, home using our volunteer drivers. All right, so, and that's a pilot program right now. And I'm hope, I've already spoken with the North Texas Food Bank a little bit about this and, and what that, what, how, how they might be able to assist or, or, or at least, um, uh, you know, spread the information around that, that of what we're doing as well. So what uh, is required to become a volunteer driver? Well, you've gotta be at least 19 years um, or older. Uh, you have to complete our volunteer driver training. Uh, there is uh, required documentation. Uh, of course, uh, you, you need uh, insurance. Uh, that is, uh, your name must be on the vehicle insurance card. So we need to see that documentation. We need to see a driver's license. Uh, we'll do a full uh, criminal and driving background check before we allow you to take your first trip. Uh, and then you're going to use your own vehicle. So it's basically a ride share service uh, using volunteers in their own cars.
So of course we have uh, a lot of local support, as I mentioned, um, and we actually do have organizations that um, will offer this as a volunteer opportunity through their own services. So they can do trips for their own clients and, and, and neighbors. So if you look at it, you've got someone in the organization who is just, you know, maybe getting burned out a little bit uh, when doing one thing and they want to switch it up. And they're like, hey, this would be great. I can still volunteer for you, Brother Bills, as an example, um, to do, um, you know, some passenger trips for, for them or, or just in the general pool of trips that are available. Uh, one thing also to also we that we do with our volunteers is that we'll 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 gather if we can. Um, you know, we we did get a chance to do that a couple times last year uh, for happy hour, but mostly it's a uh, virtual uh, with some um, um, lunch and learns where we 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 tell them their impact. We we show them what is happening, what they've done, um, and uh, we've got some great in, in incentives uh, as well. Uh, one, one incentive is if they do uh, accept it, they again uh, uh, accept that mileage reimbursement. Uh, there is, an, again, an option to donate that back. Um, it's not obviously going to pay the bills or anything, uh, but we get people generally that, um, that, that don't accept it and they, they, do, they donate it back. So it actually adds credit balances to our Freedom um, uh, Miles. Uh, that's our Phoenix Freedom Miles program where an individual calls and can't afford a trip. So we can take we can provide a free trip for them um, on on a, a certain number uh, of frequencies, um, number of frequent uh, trips. Uh, now we did just do a promotion last year. Um, some of you might have heard about that. It was a hundred thousand dollars from Toyota uh, that all went to free unlimited trips from roughly the end of September until mid December, and we provided almost three thousand trips and uh, spent over ninety five thousand dollars. There's a little bit left, then that's allocated to one of our community partners right now. Uh, but uh, it definitely made a huge impact. So the benefits of being a volunteer driver, um, you know, certainly is not the, 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 the picture here. Uh, um, uh, the benefits, obviously, I think is the, 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 the impact that the volunteers are making. Uh, they're making a huge difference. Um, obviously, we try to thank them with, um, with just, just little, uh, little gifts of appreciation. Uh, a driver does not have a set schedule. Uh, what they do is simply log into our, our volunteer um, uh, driver uh, portal, and they, they view trips that have been broadcast to everybody. And it's first come, first serve. So you look at the trip and you say, yeah, that fits my schedule this week. I can grab that one. Um, I can't do the first leg, but I can do the return leg, you know, or I can do both legs. Um, or, you know, I take Wednesday and I look at and I try to grab all the, the Wednesday trips because I'm off and I, I feel like I just want to drive around. It's all based on the volunteers availability. And this is our uh, briefly our onboarding process. So you apply, we have a brief phone interview, uh, we have the training. Um, uh, it, there is a uh, we need your vehicle uh, inspection information from you. Uh, that's part of the documentation. Uh, comprehensive background check. Um, and right now we're not doing meet and greet. Sometimes we do a ride along if we think we need to, um, and then they take their first trip. Um, it, it is a longer onboarding process than probably most volunteer opportunities are, but for good reason, right? Um, we, we don't just need people who um, are looking for a short stint. We're looking for people who want to be with us uh, indefinitely. Uh, maybe they'll take a month off. Maybe they'll, you know, we won't see, we won't hear from them in, you know, a couple of weeks or, or they're just going to take one or two trips a month. It doesn't matter to us. What we just want is your availability when you are, are ready to drive and able to drive. All right. And then finally, our website, uh, volunteerdriver.org. You can simply go on there, fill out a quick application and we'll get that started. <clears throat> so if you're going to, if you have a, a, a church group, uh, maybe you have, um, you know, a men's Bible study and they're looking for uh, another, um, you know, opportunity, uh, this would be a great one. We, we actually do need more men. Um, and I'll say this mainly because, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's not only good to have a mix of, of drivers, but uh, it definitely uh, elevates um, 
uh, sometimes uh, the the safety and nothing to be. <laughs> uh, I don't want to point out uh, point out. It basically, one of our our best volunteers are are uh, we have several women that are, are great volunteers, but I'm also looking for more men. Um, I think like like a lot of organizations, um, getting getting guys to come out and, and help, and this may be a great option. So, uh, just want to point that up, lift it up. So, thank you so much for your time, and I'll uh, I'll turn it back over to Chelsea. Great. Right. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you, Tracy. Um, at this time, we're going to go to the chat and answer any questions. So if you haven't put your question in the chat, go ahead and do so at this time. Um, we have a question about, can we get a copy of the presentations? And YNL responded that yes, um, they can email those out. So if you uh, registered for the meeting, we've got your contact information. Uh, we can get those to you. You'll notice that Tracy's contact is up there. And then Jonathan, if you wouldn't mind dropping your contact information in the chat as well, that would be great. Um, and then it looks like our first question is uh, for Jonathan. It says, how much is the charge to the individual? Can I order a ride for myself or do I have to go through a certain group? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So uh, one of the great things about the AARP Ride Plus program is that when you call or you click or you tap, however you get access to the program, you can view all your fares based on your pickup and drop off location. So the fares will be listed there. Um, you can book that ride for yourself or you can book that ride for, uh, for somebody else. Maybe you have a parent or maybe you have a neighbor that you look after and you check in on from time to time and you wanna help pay for their ride. You can do that yourself. Um, all, all, um, all options are available. Great, and then um, a similar question here. Uh, what is the name of the app and website address if I want to schedule a ride? Can you put that information in the chat? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, the uh, Phoenix um, app, uh, so it's F-E-O-N-I-X, okay? And you can find that both in the uh, Google Play or, or iPhone, um, iPhone store, iPhone store, Apple store. Um, and then uh, I'm, typing phoenixride.aarp.org uh, there, um, phoenixride.aarp.org. Uh, you can also find more information at another website. I'll drop it in there right now. All right, there comes the app name and the website. And we've got... Yes, yeah, I, did, I see a question there from Brenda. Yeah, it's going to look like a phoenix. Uh, look for this uh, uh, the, the multi rainbow looking phoenix. F E O N I X. That's the one. There you go. So if you're looking in the app store, look for the phoenix. That's going to be the right one to download. Good question. Uh, and then we've got can you provide a list of organizations um, that offer the program to residents, such as Brother Bill's? So is there kind of a database people can go to see if their organization's already a part of this or offering services? Right, yeah, definitely. I can uh, provide a list of those here. Um, I, I don't control that, um, whether who, who gets a ride from them or not, right? So, um, if, but if you have, let's say for Brother Bill, because we know a lot of us know about them, uh, they, they do service at 75212 area. And if you're in that area and that person's there, then they may be able to assist you. So I'll, I'll put those partners in the, in the chat, uh, but just to note that um, right now, Phoenix is, a, is in a place where we rely heavily on our community partners to help, um, help provide these types of rides. Uh, we also rely heavily on our on our sponsors, AARP and Toyota, to help us fund trips. And then we as Phoenix also fundraise um, uh, for our Freedom Miles Fund, uh, which is a nice small little <laughs> balance right now. And we, we want to grow that. So uh, I'll ask that we definitely look for um, uh, grant opportunities, donations in order to to widen the ability for us to to pay for more rides. Great, and it says, do you have a rate working with an organization? Uh, no, uh, if you're a community partner, uh, you you have access to the program for free. Um, anybody does, so there's no ch there's no charge to use a program at all from for anybody. The only cost um, is the ride of the trip. Is, is the cost of the trip. Great. And then, um, Tracy, is there a way to see which routes um, 
if, if there's a rating of which routes need the most volunteers or has a higher need? There is. I can actually get those areas um, to you guys. Um, but also, if you register as a volunteer, once you become registered as a volunteer, you will receive frequent emails about the areas in which we need volunteers to deliver meals. So I'll know our high need areas, um, like I was talking to Dabney earlier, is um, Irving, Grand Prairie, um, we have Pleasant Grove and Mesquite are high need areas for volunteers as well. Those are areas that, you know, we have less volunteers and less pay drivers. So we have to work a little bit harder to get those routes in those areas covered. Great. And are volunteers allowed to kind of select the routes that are closest to them? They can. You can select routes that are either closest to your home or closest to your work. We have a lot of volunteers who work for corporations that allow them to take, um, they allow volunteer hours. So they go and deliver meals on their lunch breaks because our meal deliveries are between 10.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. So it usually takes about an hour to an hour and a half to deliver a route. Routes usually range from about 11 to maybe 15 to 18 clients just depending on if they're all houses or if it's a set of apartment complex, because we have apartment complexes that have multiple clients in them. So it just kind of varies, but no route is over about an hour to an hour and a half to deliver. Great. And is that something families are allowed to participate in together? Most definitely. We welcome everyone. There is not an age limit. Um, we do now require because state mandates that we do have background checks on our volunteers. So anyone 17 years or older will have to submit for a background check, but anyone under the age of 17, you can still register or not, and you can come with your parent. Um, we do for volunteers that are under age still in high school, we give volunteer hours for them for their high schools. Um, we have different special projects that's going on throughout the year, like our Adopt a Senior project for um, Christmas. Um, we put together um, nourishing neighbor boxes to go out to some of our clients. We have a pet care program that provides pet foods to our clients who have pets every second or third weekend of the month. So we have a wide variety of um, volunteer opportunities versus just delivering meals. If you're looking for something on the weekends or you know you have a small group that wants to do a team building activity, we have a lot of different volunteer opportunities. Okay, thank you. And it looks like Jonathan has listed some of the community partners that are already a part of it. Um, so you can scan that list and see if there is one close to you. Um, there was one more question that popped up. What does a ride cost to the individual? Yeah, good question. So I'll, I'll give you a uh, kind of approximation. Again, it's based on the pickup and drop off location, right? And then so when we go through our onboarding with our providers, we ask for their booking fee and we ask for their per mileage fee. So let's say a cab uh, company, for instance, actually a cab company is, is reg, uh, regulated to only charge $1.80 um, per mile but they can charge whatever booking fee they want. So Cowboy Cab charges um, $7 plus that $1.80. Uh, uh, Rideshare, uh, it's, uh, we don't even have access to that because it's all through an app and integration, but it's it's similar. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less than, than the actual app. So you just got to get on and kind of look and, and see what that is. Um, now our special medical providers, they are more expensive because they provide door through door or door to door, door through door service. Um, so they they generally start uh, with a booking fee of around $30. Sometimes um, we have one that's around $20, $20, uh, $20, or $20, $20, I believe, that's safe and secure. She does a lot of trips in the Southern sector. Uh, so her her clientele, you know, need a better affordable option. She's amazing. I highly recommend sharing. That's a safe, safe and secure transportation. But then they they generally charge like a dollar um, or so or, or two dollar max per mileage fee. So your your five to ten mile uh, five to ten mile trip can be thirty five uh, forty to forty five dollars, and that sounds high, and it is. But when you think about you know how often um, are the people that need that type of level of service, and then 
that provider is not taking as many trips, right? They, they, they spend more time getting, uh, helping that individual in and out of the, uh, of the vehicle or into wherever um, uh, or whatever needs they have. So uh, that is the, the high cost of transportation generally um, uh, when it comes to uh, serving older adults. All right, great. I think that's all of the questions that came in um, through the chat. Again, both of our speakers' contact information is there. So if there's something else that you think of um, that is readily accessible to you. And with that, I will turn it over to Wynilla. Okay. Well, well, thank you to both of our very informative speakers today. Um, I will be sending out copies of their slides and links to, to resources that they've mentioned. Um, before we go, I want to share with you a couple of announcements and give anybody else an opportunity who might have an, a special announcement. But we are planning, our Senior Hunger Action Team is planning a Senior Hunger Summit uh, in May 2022. We're about to have our um, initial planning meeting to, to talk about uh, to, to shaping, shaping this event. Uh, in May, so be on the lookout for more informa information about that. And if you think you might be interested in participating in the conversations around this Hunger Summit and helping us um, craft craft this event, then please contact me and I'll, I'll include you in our upcoming meetings and conversations. Any, are there any other announcements? If you want, you may unmute. unmute. I do wanna add one more thing. March is the March for Meals um, for all of Meals on Wheels of America. In 1972, President Nixon signed into an amended law um, starting basically the Meals on Wheels program for the Older Americans Act. Um, so we would love for you guys to come out and be a part of the March for Meals campaign. We do a campaign week. The whole month of March, we are um, looking to onboard as many volunteers as possible to kind of get everyone out into the community to help because of this particular campaign. Great. If anyone else have something quick? Okay, well, our next meeting is April 28th, 1.30 p.m. We're working on um, topic uh, for that meeting and, and speakers for that meeting. Hope to see you there. Look for information about that. Check out our website, dallashunger.org. Um, check us out on social media. And uh, if you want a copy of that Hunger Solutions for the Faith Community Toolkit, you can find it on our website. Uh, go, to the, go to our website, uh, click on uh, action, action Focus Area, look for Faith Community, and um, go to that page and you can download a copy of that toolkit. And that's it uh, for me. Dabney, you have anything to say? I just want to thank you, Wynella, for coordinating all this. Um, you are a star in helping us do this. And um, again, thank you to the to wonderful speakers. Great information. Thank you so much, everyone. And hope thank to you, see you again in April. April. Sorry, I got here late. I'm looking forward to receiving all the information. Um, thank you. Sure, sure. Okay, I think that's it. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.